In the last part of my video, we saw the fall of Israel. Because of Israel and Judah's wickedness and rebellion, Elohim removed them from their land. The northern ten tribes were conquered by Assyria. They were taken out of Israel. Later, Judah and Benjamin were taken captive as well. As I said in part 8, we will no longer be discussing the ten northern tribes. The story is all about Judah. Elohim repeatedly said he was going to preserve Judah and Jerusalem as was his promise to his servant David. By now you should have learned what happens when you rebel against Elohim. Make it a point in your life to use the lessons of Israel. Elohim is great and worthy to be praised. He is not to be toyed with. Commit your life to him and surrender all to him. This next part takes us into captivity of Judah. Judah is no longer in their land. Towards the end of the 7th century BC, Babylon had overthrown the domination of their longtime rival, Assyria. They eliminated the Assyrian Empire, turning it into what became known as the Neo-Babylonian or Chaldean Empire. Nebuchadnezzar brought Babylon to great heights, and after his conqueror of Judah, he deported many Jews to his land of Babylon. One of those exiles was Daniel. Daniel had a very interesting story. His book in the Old Testament speaks on what happened during Judah's captivity in Babylon. This part of the story is used as a testimony to how Elohim works his purposes through his servants, even in the courts of pagan rulers. His story is very much like that of Joseph. No matter where Elohim's chosen people were, those that trusted him proved just how great Elohim really was and is. And this part of the story is all about that. Let's begin. So in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. He carries many of Judah off to Babylon. When they got in Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar instructed Ashpenaz, the one in charge of the exiles, to bring some of the children of Israel, the good-looking ones, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. You see, this is often how a nation gets conquered. It's not just about them being ruled by foreign leaders, but it's about being forced in learning their culture. In a later part of my series, you'll understand Mystery Babylon, the Babylon that was prophesied to come, and you will learn how they did this same practice, teaching those they ruled and took into captivity the ways of their culture. So there are some from Judah chosen. The king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank and three years of training for them, so that at the end of the time they might serve before the king. Some of those men taken into this training were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Ashpenaz, the chief of the exiles, gave them Babylonian names. Daniel was Belteshazzar, to Hananiah was Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. They were given all the fine delicacies. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies or with the wine which he drank. So he asked Ashpenaz that he might not defile himself. Elohim brought Daniel in good favor of Ashpenaz, and Ashpenaz said, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to one of the servants Ashpenaz put in charge of them, Daniel said, Please test your servant for ten days, and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you, and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this matter, and he tested them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. So the steward took away the portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four young men, Elohim gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. In the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the king what his dream was. So they came and stood before the king, and the king said to them, I have had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. 
tell your servants the dream and we will give the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made an ash heap. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who could tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has never asked such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. It is a difficult thing that the king requests, and there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. Nebuchadnezzar did not like that answer. He was furious. He gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon, including Daniel and his companions. Daniel asked, why is the decree from the king so urgent? Then the head of the king's guard told Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they might seek mercies from Elohim concerning the secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Daniel praised Elohim. Daniel went to the king's guard and said, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Take me before the king, and I will tell the king the interpretation. So he was brought to the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen, and its interpretation? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these. You, O king, were watching, and behold a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. The image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like shaft from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found, and the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand, and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, the kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Or as you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided yet the strength of the iron shall be in it. Just as you saw the iron mixed with the ceramic clay, and as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And as much as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces, the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, Elohim has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and his interpretation is sure. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your Elohim is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, since you could reveal this secret. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Also, Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. 
But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. This is again how Elohim showed his great name. All these new generations had their experience with witnessing how great Elohim was, which is why he is worshipped today. After the exile of Israel and Judah, if Elohim was not so great, we would not know anything of the God of Israel. You must understand this. So later in Nebuchadnezzar's rule, he was really feeling himself. He made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He made all the officials of Babylon gather together for the dedication of the image that he had set up, and they all stood before the image. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre, and symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the Chaldeans decided to hate on Daniel and his companions. They came forward to Nebuchadnezzar and said, There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods, nor worship the gold image which you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, then it's all good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it usually was heated. He commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. They were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire even killed the men who took up Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, Yes, our king. And he said, Look, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Sadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire, and the satraps, administers, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, their clothes were not affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angels and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made an ash heap, because there is no other god who can deliver this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Use that as a lesson for yourself. When your whole life is threatened for serving Elohim and not following the ways of this world, will you bend or will you be like Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and trust in Elohim to protect you no matter what? Their faith was such a testimony they gained the right to worship Elohim because they allowed him to show how powerful he was. That's the story of faith, but it's not over. Later on in Nebuchadnezzar's rule, he had a dream which made him afraid and troubled him. 
he again issued a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before him, that they might make known to him the interpretation of the dream. Then the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers came in, and he told them the dream, but they couldn't interpret it. Daniel later came before him, and he told him the dream, saying, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you, and no secret troubles you, explain to me the visions of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. These were the visions of my head while on my bed. I was looking, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens, and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heaven dwelt in its branches, and all the flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. He cried aloud and said, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches. Strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beast get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and the roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze and in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beast on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of man. Let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men, gives it to whomever he will and sets over it the lowest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belteshazzar, declare its interpretation. Since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or his interpretation trouble you. Daniel answered and said, My lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, its interpretation concern your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens, and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant, and which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and whose branches the birds of heaven had their home. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong. For your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze and tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with dew of heaven, and let him graze with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him? This is the interpretation. O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon the Lord the king. They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you, till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he chooses. And inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you, after you come to know the heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous, and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. And all of this did happen to Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men, and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. In the end, Nebuchadnezzar said, I lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him for who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. 
all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways justice and those who walk in pride he is able to put down. So the moral of this story is that Elohim showed that he's in control. Don't ever forget that. Even though the wicked seem to have much power and we get so caught up in the wicked and their schemes, just remember Elohim is in control always. Do not fear them. Fear him. It's all about him. Elohim's people were cast off into another land by a king who did not know their God. But in the end of his rule, Nebuchadnezzar, the one that overtook Elohim's land of Judah, later recognized Elohim as the Most High and praised him. Nebuchadnezzar even realized it wasn't by Nebuchadnezzar's power that allowed him to rule the people of Judah, but by Elohim's power that allowed him and chose him to rule. Elohim showed that even though his people were cast off and in captivity, he was still with them. The best part of that is that it's even more true today because he has given us his set apart spirit. For those that are born again, we have him every day and second of our lives. He never leaves us. He wants us to have faith and trust like Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do you? In the next part of the series, we will go into the end of the story in Daniel. All this can be found in the book of Daniel. It reads like a story. I want you to learn faith and trust in Elohim from this part of the series. Even when all odds seem to be against you and not in your favor, that's exactly when you need to trust in Elohim. He uses his chosen people as an example to the world. But because of the blood of Yahshua, we all have access to Elohim now. Don't take his gift for granted. Serve him today. If this blessed you, please like the video and share it with others who may be blessed. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I want to say I appreciate all of your support, comments, and thank you especially to those who have donated on my site. It's truly a blessing to me. Thanks again. I love you all.